I rolled into the hairdressers right before I went on my hair journey and I cried in in the seat you know as we were looking in the mirror together and I just told her I don't know what I've done it's just broken and I had this like dry little ball of broken hair she took out the hair elastic and we just looked at it together and it was just so depressing <laughs> and so just embarrassing honestly I was very embarrassed of my hair Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. Welcome back to the living room. It's been a while since we've been here. And today I am so excited to share with you guys that I am finally going to be spilling the secrets on how I grew my hair long, long and healthy. This is the longest my hair has been since I was a child and it is the healthiest my hair has probably ever been. So I am going to break that down for you guys. I'm gonna give you guys some backstory on my hair journey, how I had the worst hair of my life and how I've come to have the best hair of my life. So thank you for tuning in. Um, and before we dive in, I just wanna say, I think everybody has different hair goals, but I know a lot of you are interested in growing your hair long. So so on my channel, if you're aware, I talk a lot about femininity um, and glow ups, how we can be our best self. And I just want to say, I don't think you need super long hair to look your best. I honestly don't. Um, I think for me, long hair looks better on me than short hair. Short hair really ages me. So even though we're talking today about how I grew my hair long, it's kind of more just how I got my hair really healthy so it was able to grow long. So even if your goal is not to grow your hair long, um, even if you feel like you can't grow your hair long or our hair is completely different types and it's just not achievable, don't click out of the video because a lot of this advice just applies to everybody's hair. Um, how we can get our scalps healthy, how we can keep our hair healthy, how we can foster more hair growth for thicker hair, all of that great stuff. So before before we really get to the tips though, I have to illustrate for you how far I've come because this hair is not going to be impressive to you until you see what I was starting with. Um, as a child, I had waist length, long, luscious hair. As a really little girl, I had curly hair. It turned kind of straight when I was in middle school age. Um, and it was waist length, it was long, and then I started messing with it too much. I got a lot of layers when I was in high school. I started getting highlights and then full on hair dye from the hairdresser. And then before you knew it, I was dyeing the whole of my head in my college bathroom. So five, six years ago, was probably the lowest point I had with my hair. Um, like I said, I had been highlighting it since I was like 13 and then that turned into just dyeing it lighter and lighter and lighter. And I would tease it a lot. I was really rough with it, essentially. Um, it kind of seemed almost like I had curly hair because my hair was so dry, had no oil in it. So it just kind of crunch up. It wasn't like a nice actual curl. It was just crunchy and dry. And it was because I had essentially wrecked it through neglect. Now I will say, I know a lot of you can relate to this, but the lowest point I was ever at with my hair was also the lowest point mentally and emotionally in my life. I was going through one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life. Um, a lot of serious relational trauma, drama, a lot of grief and pain, and my looks were just the absolute bottom of my priority list, but I also think I was just neglecting my appearance a lot. I've talked about this a little bit on my channel before, but essentially, um, um, just a low mental health period in my life led me to the worst hair of my life. And so when I kind of came out of that, I, I decided I wanted to go on a glow up journey. Um, hair was probably one of my number one priorities because it was one of the top things holding me back. I knew it was dry, it was breaking off, um, it was patchy from all the different like colors. And I would look at women with just long, healthy hair and just want that and it just felt so unachievable essentially my hair was really layered and the top layer still a little light back from then the top layer did not grow longer than here all around around my head the back of my head had layers that were this short my hair would not grow past essentially this length I think it was around that length when I got married. Um, I, With every dye, it would just get shorter and shorter and shorter, and then I would trim it, and it just felt like it wouldn't grow longer. But what I learned, and what you guys are gonna learn in this video, it's not that my hair wasn't growing, 
it's that it was breaking off at the ends before um, it could grow past that. So my hair would honestly get to this point and just break off, just break off. And like, it's a cute length, but I wanted to achieve more length. So firstly, I learned about my hair. I learned about what type of hair I had. I realized that my hair was really delicate, so I have fine hair. It's not hardy hair. I can't just mess around with it without causing a lot of breakage. So I have delicate, fine hair. It's a 1B uh, curl pattern. Here's an example of curl patterns. I will link that below. It's helpful to know your curl pattern because that will give you a lot of information on how to take care of your hair. And we also had hard water. So a lot of mineral buildup would happen on my scalp and my hair further drying it out. And because of all the box dyeing and all of that, the ends were really, really dry and high porosity. So every product I used would just like either soak into it or it would get really, really dry and just break off. So I learned about my hair and then it changed how I approached my hair. And I'm just gonna come right out of the gate in case you don't watch this whole video. The most important change I made to my hair routine was oiling my hair the night before my showers. So I went from trying to get as much length out of my showers, you know, with dry shampoo, lots of space between washing my hair, to washing my hair regularly every other day or every three days. And the night before I planned to shower, I would put oil, grapeseed oil, from about here down on my hair, and then I would braid it or put it in a bun with clips, not a scrunchie, with clips, and then I would wash it out the next day with a clarifying shampoo. So oiling the ends of my hair before showers was probably the most helpful thing I did, um, as well as taking more frequent showers. I know a lot of us have read blog posts or heard advice from people, um, you know, if you want your hair to grow long, stop washing it so much maybe even don't wash it ever and I tried that and all it did was make my scalp feel disgusting really itchy and my hair would dry out so much like from here down that it would break off at an even faster rate and what I learned is because my hair is fine because it's delicate um, because it's straight I need more frequent washes now if your hair is curly or if it has a different like pattern to it or if it's really thick maybe you do want to cut down on washing your hair you know I cannot speak to that but me personally I needed to increase how much I was washing my hair so I decided to stop dry shampooing altogether and when my hair felt greasy enough to dry shampoo I would just wash it it was more work but it made a massive difference and what I realized is the work of washing it and using a hair dryer on my hair and all of that um, did less damage to to my hair than taking a really long time between washes because my hair really depends on frequent conditioning and deep conditioning as well as the oiling the night before the shower. My scalp really like needs that cleansing and that was impeding hair growth as well. So taking more showers, really massaging my scalp, stimulating that and just making sure my scalp was extremely healthy definitely helped my hair grow faster and longer. I think like the heart behind not washing your hair as much um, is really good. You don't wanna expose it to really harsh water um, or use a hair dryer on it, blah, 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 blah. But what people aren't factoring in and what I didn't factor in with not washing my hair frequently is how much extra stuff I had to do to make it presentable. So I would use a, a ton of dry shampoo and that would really dry out my scalp and like coat my hair and make it really vulnerable um, and I would do more hairstyles to it like ponytails and buns and stuff because it was dirty and it really needed washing so I would put it in buns and that caused a lot of breakage as well so teasing caused a lot of breakage um, like I said not washing my hair enough caused a lot of breakage but there's also other things like wearing your hair down and loose when you're sleeping so you can wear braids or buns to bed and that will kind of keep your hair in a set position and prevent breakage when you're you're moving around also if you live in a cold climate like myself I'm looking at an expanse of snow in front of me um, that cold weather can cause extra breakage especially if you have like coats rubbing underneath your hair a lot or sweaters um, it can cause knots if you're brushing your hair very vigorously like I used to I used to just and then 
call it a day and now I try to be much more gentle um, so essentially breakage you know how can you mitigate breakage if you can wear hairstyles throughout the daytime um, like a claw clip or a braid that is also good I had a mindset shift with my hair essentially from viewing it as just like something attached to my head, like a piece of clothing that could just take all this wear and tear, um, to something really delicate, like a flower petal or something along those lines that I needed to protect it, I needed to care for it, and that's when I saw tons of hair growth. When I was really struggling with my hair, I was watching a Jenna Marbles video, and she had like really, really long hair at the end of like her YouTube career, and she talked about it one time, and she said, you know, this is kind of controversial, but just stop cutting your hair. <laughs> And I know that like sounds crazy because we always read like cut regular haircuts equals good hair growth and what that really means is if you trim off the split ends frequently they won't split far up the shaft and cause more breakage so I get the logic behind that um, but I took her advice and I went a year without cutting my hair and I saw huge hair growth like more than I had in the year before when I was frequently trimming it okay and then I also stopped dyeing my hair I feel like I'm to the point where my hair is healthy enough that I could get like highlights maybe like around my face or something and it wouldn't be the end of the world um, but with my fine delicate hair that gets really easily dried out I just kind of don't want to mess around with that because honestly the pipeline from bleach blonde hair to melted off broken hair is a real thing honestly you can dye your hair too much and if you are getting it dyed correctly it's often extremely expensive like $500 and I decided I would rather spend that $500 I'm not spending that much but I would rather spend that money that I would be spending on hair dye instead on hair masks really nice conditioners my silk pillowcase you know just things to protect my hair but I just really believe like healthy hair trumps everything else it's better to have healthy hair than it is to have really voluminous hair or bleach blonde hair or like this color that you always wanted if it comes at the expense of the health of your hair it's not worth it if you cannot achieve that dream color without wrecking your hair causing it to be dry or causing it to just be like straw it's not first of all going to be your dream hair because your dream hair is healthy hair with that really awesome color and that color isn't going to look good just because it's that color i i, I see this all the time because people will look at like a, a, a picture of hair and think oh well, that hair is beautiful because it's this color no it's beautiful because it's healthy and it happens to be a color that you like and so if you put that that color that you like on unhealthy straw-like broken hair the color is not what's going to make the hair beautiful the health of the hair is what makes it beautiful because your your hair will be beautiful if it's healthy no matter what color it is no matter what curl shape it is if it's healthy it will look beautiful I promise you um, I was very doubtful of that when I started my hair journey because I thought I had to have really light hair in order to look good but no I had to correct myself and learn that healthy hair on me was always going to be more beautiful than unhealthy hair regardless of what color I achieved and so really take that into consideration when approaching hair dye. I don't have a problem with it if you can maintain the health of your hair, but if it's making your hair start, you know, looking a little sus and things are starting to break down, maybe just chill out on the hair dye and see what happens. Okay, so the last two areas of how I grew my hair long um, was first of all my diet. So when my hair also was really breaking off a lot, I was, I don't know, I don't even know what I was eating. I just know that I wasn't eating a protein focused diet. I read on this really old blog post website from like 2004 from this woman who had super long hair and she was saying that one of the secrets to grow her growing her hair long was to drink whole milk every day and I remember at the time I was not drinking milk I thought that sounded disgusting but when I went on my hair journey I thought of that lady and I decided you know what she knows how to grow long hair better than I do clearly my hair is breaking off so why not try it so I started drinking whole milk every single day I started drinking eating a ton of Greek yogurt, whole milk Greek yogurt, and eating meat whenever meat was offered, cooking meat at least once a day, and eating a lot of eggs. Um, that transformed my hair because I realized, you know, your hair, your nails, 
they're made up of keratin, which is protein. You need protein to grow your hair. And I have had way more success growing my hair with animal product protein rather than, you know, everyone says like, there's protein in kale <laughs> or there's protein in this special almond oat drink or whatever. Okay, cool. I cannot confirm nor deny if that works, um, but I can confirm that once I started eating differently, a ton of animal products, my hair has just grown and my nails too they're just so much better you know i used to be the type of person that had split fingernails constantly i had split hair split fingernails i just felt like a mess <laughs> and then you know changing my diet um my nails grow like a weed my hair grows amazingly all right this is getting super long so i'm just gonna share the last piece of advice the last like thing i did to make my hair grow was to copy people with long hair <laughs> copy people with the hair i wanted to take their advice to follow their routines and to just consistently and with commitment do what they told me to do for growing your hair long and lo and behold it worked the people who make those videos know what they're talking about so i took all the advice um, i could from a bunch of youtubers and i will link some of them below one of them is audrey victoria she has a whole youtube channel full of beauty secrets and advice but especially a ton of content on hair specifically it's really important to surround yourself with people who are constantly educating you on the thing you're trying to achieve so if i was trying to lose weight i would want to follow a lot of influencers who had great exercise and nutrition advice um, that worked for me and my lifestyle and the same thing goes for hair if you want to grow your hair long you know follow the long hair subreddit on reddit get on hair talk on tiktok and binge watch hair videos follow day in the life routines and hair routines from people who have the type of hair that you want to achieve wrapping up i do want to say you know if you are in the process of growing your hair out and it's broken and frustrating there's nothing wrong with just getting a chop having a clean slate you know i never did like the chop my broken hair off kind of deal um but i i rolled into the hairdressers right before i went on my hair journey and i cried in in the seat you know as we were looking in the mirror together and i just told her i don't know what i've done it's just broken and i had this like dry little ball of broken hair in a bun at the base of my neck and she took she took out the hair elastic and we just looked at it together and it was just so depressing <laughs> and so just embarrassing honestly i was very embarrassed of my hair um but now you know i have all of this luscious healthy hair and it's not because i have amazing hair growing out of my head it's because i work very hard um to grow it long to protect it and to do everything i talked about in this video so don't be hard on yourself. I know what it feels like to not be satisfied with your hair. And I think there's a special attachment we sometimes have as women with our hair and with our femininity and our beauty and attractiveness. And, and it can be really sensitive. It's deeply personal. I think hair is deeply personal. It's often, you know, a display, whether we like it or not, of our choices and our habits and our health and, and so much. And I think that's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. And so I just really want to encourage you, if you're not where you want to be with your hair, don't be hard on yourself. It took me four plus years to finally feel satisfied with my hair. Also, notice in this video, I did not talk about um, avoiding heat. I blow dry my hair after showers. I use a hair protectant. The right products are key. I use one leave-in conditioner slash heat protectant on my hair after my showers and before I blow dry and I use a special brush that is really gentle on my hair so those two things combined it doesn't really matter how much heat I use on my hair I've noticed if I'm using a heat protectant and I'm blow drying gently um, my hair is healthy and I will occasionally curl my hair I will occasionally straighten the fronts of it you know I I didn't want this hair growth journey to look like me wearing a braid down the back of my head every single day and every single night for four years in order to achieve long hair i wanted to enjoy my hair while also growing it long i wanted it to look beautiful and and stylish while also growing it long and so don't also think that just because you want to grow your hair long you have to keep it in this like oiled tube braid 
24 7 you know you guys know I wear my hair down um, I play around with the front of it I've cut bangs on myself I've had fun with it while also growing it out and also getting it healthy and so I'm sure I could have grown it longer and healthier faster if I wore protective style every single day and never used heat on it. Um, but I didn't want that. I wanted to have the blown out look. I wanted to enjoy my hair while also growing it long. So notice that that is not one of my tips. Obviously you can avoid heat and it's probably good to, you know, if your routine is literally straightening every single strand of your hair every single day or curling every single strand, that might not be great. You know, I only curl my hair maybe once a week um, and I curl the front when I need to. But just know you can have fun with your hair. The key is just heat protectants, deep conditioners. You cannot just shampoo and condition your hair and then mess around with a curling iron every single day and not expect to have hair damage. You need to use a heat protectant. And so that is also one of the number one most important things I could, I could ever communicate in this video. Use a heat protectant slash deep conditioner after your showers on your hair. So yeah, and just know too, you're gonna try things that just aren't gonna work. You know, you're gonna try a product that you don't like, you don't like that much, or a shampoo that just doesn't really work. What I have had to learn with this hair journey is hair is not an overnight thing, but it's also not even like a six month journey. It's a years long journey. It's slow, it's a super slow process. <laughs> and it's kind of like watching paint dry, it's boring. So focus on other things while kind of having this going on in the background of your life and seriously not fixating on it will make it feel like your hair just grew out super fast <laughs> so that is all of my hair advice i have an i have a couple in-depth blog posts about my hair routine i will link below i'm going to link those youtubers for you and my favorite products i don't use a lot of products but the ones i do i've been using for years and i love them so check out those links leave a comment below with your hair story your hair advice any advice i missed i know i missed a lot because even though this video is very long i could talk I could keep talking for another 20 minutes about this, but I will spare you all. So if I missed anything, leave your comments below. For people who have a different hair texture or who maybe you only do wash your hair once a week or once every other week, leave your experience below as well because I cannot speak to that. That routine did not work for me, but I know it works for a lot of people. So thank you for being part of this community. Um, cheers to all of you. Cheers to healthy hair. Doesn't matter what length it is. Doesn't matter what color it is but may we all achieve that beautiful, healthy hair. I love you guys so much, and I hope you have a beautiful and healthy hair type of week. Bye.